Welcome back for another class guide video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Warlock class with the Great Old One Patron and the Pact of the Chain, which is currently the only Pact boon available in early access. This guide will also benefit those of you who want to play the Fiend Warlock, for many of the Warlock's features and spells will be used regardless of which subclass you choose. I think many of you know what I'm talking about. Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to some recent YouTube channel members, John Sunsery, Urban Druid, Anthony Berardi, The Big PJ, Sonny Black, Ryan Spencer, and Sorcerer's Origins. Thank you guys so much. If any of you guys want to come hang out for some live streams, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern, as well as randomly on the weekends right here on this channel. Also, links to my YouTube, my YouTube. Also, links to my Twitter and my Discord server will be below. Let's get right into it. The Warlock's spellcasting ability is Charisma, and with this Warlock build, we will not be worrying too much about using weapons. Our power will lie in our spells, or should I just say our cantrip, Eldritch Blast. The best racial choices for your Warlock will include the races that offer at least a plus one to Charisma, which will allow you to get your Charisma ability score to 16 in character creation with that plus three modifier. This plus three will be added to some of your spells, making them more likely to hit their target and also deal more damage. High Charisma also makes you a very charismatic character. So if you're looking for a little love in your life, but you're not too strong with your words, Warlocks might be the solution to your problems. Although I bet most of you guys will still rely on the deception skill. Races that offer this plus one or plus two to Charisma include the Tiefling and all of its sub-races, the Drow, humans, all of the Half-Elves, and the Lightfoot Halfling. The best choice in terms of optimizing your ability scores would be one of the Half-Elf choices, for you get a plus two to your primary ability score Charisma, as well as a plus one to two other ability scores of your choice. This effectively gives you a boost to your three most important abilities. However, Drow and the Lightfoot Halfling's ability score bonuses of Dexterity and Charisma allow you to get both of these important ability scores to 16. The main thing is making a racial choice that will get your Charisma to 16 in character creation, so have fun and don't stress out too much on your choice. Now let's head to the Abilities tab. Charisma is the most important because like we said, it's your spellcasting ability, so make that a 16 right away. Playing as a half-elf also allows you to make your dexterity and constitution 16s with those plus 3 modifiers. Dexterity is going to help with your armor class number, making you harder to hit, and also help with initiative rolls and dexterity saving throws. Constitution is very important for a warlock, not only for the boost to your hit points, but also because one of your main warlock spells is going to require concentration and a higher constitution helps you maintain that concentration, keeping certain spells up longer. If you do go the 16-16-16 route with these three abilities, you will have two points left to spend, and I'd recommend boosting your wisdom to 10 to help with wisdom saving throws, and possibly some skills as well. You could also do this with intelligence. If you don't play as a half-elf, you're going to at least want to get your dexterity and constitution to 14 with the plus two modifiers. But if you can get one of them to 16, which will likely be dexterity, that will work even better. When choosing your skills, just remember that you have a high charisma and dexterity. So skills that are associated with those specific abilities, you'll be most strong at. Heading over to the class tab, we are of course choosing the Warlock and going with the Great Old One Patron. This is a really fun subclass and focuses more so on things that deal with the mind and alien-like stuff, while the Fiend Patron subclass choice is more focused on fire and hellish type stuff. We get the choice of two cantrips right away at level 1, and you guessed it, the really important choice here is Eldritch Blast. This is the bread and butter of many Warlock builds. It deals great damage, and as you level up, you get to add Eldritch Invocations to it, which are extra effects making it even more powerful. The fact that it is a cantrip means that you can use it at will, in every fight, on every turn if you so wish, which you'll probably do a lot. When you first get this cantrip, it will deal 1d10 force damage, and force damage is a great damage type for it is the least resisted. Eldritch Blast will require you to do an attack roll, and your charisma modifier of plus 3 will be added to that. 
When we reach level 2, you'll also be able to add your Charisma modifier to its damage, as well as some other effects. This is a really good cantrip. Your choice for your other cantrip is really up to you. You already have your offensive damage-based cantrip with Eldritch Blast, so I would consider more utility-based cantrips like Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, or maybe even Friends. I would not recommend taking True Strike though, because it requires concentration, and we need our concentration for something else which we will get to shortly. You also get to choose two spells in character creation, and like with the cantrips, one spell is going to stand out here. Hex is a level 1 spell that will allow you to deal an additional 1d6 necrotic damage whenever you hit with an attack. The great thing about Hex is that it uses your bonus action, not your action, which will allow you to cast Hex on a creature and then use Eldritch Blast all in the same turn. This is a very powerful combination. Hex does use up one of your limited spell slots, but it can be reapplied to other enemies without costing you a spell slot. This is a very beneficial feature to Hex because you can keep throwing it around to different enemies, getting that extra 1-6 to six damage on top of Eldritch Blast at the cost of just your bonus action. So cast Hex on your enemy, blast them with Eldritch Blast, and when that enemy dies, move Hex to a different enemy and repeat. This extra hex damage only applies to attack spells or weapon attacks. It will not be added on top of spells that require the enemy to do a saving throw. Now hex also gives disadvantage on ability checks to the creature that you cast it on with a specific ability that you get to choose. Note that I said ability checks though and not saving throws. For the most part, you don't have to worry about what ability you choose. You are more so using hex for that extra damage. Ability checks are not common in combat, especially in Baldur's Gate 3. However, it is possible that a Strength Hex might affect Shove, and a Wisdom Hex might affect an enemy's ability to spot hidden creatures. It's hard to know for sure though. For our second spell choice, we have to keep in mind that as a Warlock, even at early access max level of 4, you will only have 2 spell slots. For the most part, you're going to use Hex every fight, using up one of those spell slots, leaving you with just one. So whatever spell you choose here, keep in mind that its use will be limited. Armor of Agathis gives you 5 temporary HP and deals 5 cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack. Once the temporary HP is gone though, the armor goes away. For the most part, you're going to be avoiding melee situations with this build, so you might not get a huge benefit from the melee cold damage aspect of it. But starting off the day with extra HP is very helpful. The temporary HP and damage of the cold will increase to 10 when you get to level 3. Is it worth using one of your spell slots for some temporary HP? For the most part it is, but it becomes even more worth it when you realize that after casting it, you can simply take a short rest and get back your spell slot and the armor will stay active on your warlock. It only has to be reapplied after a long rest at camp, or if an enemy destroys it. I definitely recommend picking up this spell either at level 1 or 2. It's a simple way to buff your warlock, and you know that you will always get use out of it unlike some of the other spells. Arms of Hadar is a level 1 warlock spell that deals 2d6 necrotic damage and makes it so that your targets cannot take reactions. Once again, it's important to remember that we're going to be keeping our warlock away from melee combatants the best that we can, so this spell might not be used as much as you'd think. However, if you do find yourself in melee range of enemies, or better yet, multiple enemies, Arms of Hadar will deal damage to all of them. This spell will force your targets to do strength saving throws, and if they succeed they will still take damage, but only half. The other aspect of this spell where it prevents your targets from using reactions could be super powerful, but since in Baldur's Gate 3 you can already disengage from a fight at the cost of just a bonus action and not your action, this could change in future updates, this aspect of the spell loses some of its potency. But still, if enemies get in your face and you cast Arms of Hadar, you can now simply walk away from them without them getting opportunity attacks on you, and you will still have your bonus action to use for something else. Dissonant Whispers is a spell where you whisper a discordant melody to a creature dealing 3d6 psychic damage and also making that creature become frightened. Casting this spell forces your target to do a wisdom saving throw, and if they are successful, only half damage is dealt. 
One of the best uses of this spell would be to cast it on an enemy that has a party member of yours in melee range. This way, when the enemy becomes frightened and moves away, your party member will get an opportunity attack. Unfortunately though, making your enemy move away from you seems to be currently bugged, making this spell much less powerful at this time. Hellish Rebuke is a reaction spell and has the potential to deal some good damage. It reads as, the next time you take damage, you use your reaction to surround your attacker in hellish flames that deal 2d10 fire damage. If your target succeeds on a dexterity saving throw, they will only take half the damage. So if you use Hellish Rebuke, the next enemy that deals damage to you, your Warlock will react and set them on fire adding more damage to the round. This spell can actually be pretty good because it doesn't interfere with your action or your bonus action on a round of combat, it's a reaction. The last spell I'm going to mention here is Tasha's Hideous Laughter. This spell reads as, inflict a creature with fits of laughter, leaving it prone and incapacitated. This spell lasts for up to 10 turns, and to resist or break out of it, your target has to be successful on a wisdom saving throw. This spell is so much fun and can be a huge help to a combat encounter, especially if you get it to last for multiple turns. You can literally take an enemy completely out of a fight in a hilarious way. Just make sure you or your party members do not deal any damage to the target until you're ready for it to be back in the fight. Since this spell also makes your target prone, your melee based party members will have advantage on the target. This spell does not compete with Eldritch Blast, it's not a damage spell, but instead it offers you some battlefield control. However, it does require concentration, which will prevent you from using Hex while it's active, so keep this in mind. You cannot use this spell on creatures with an intelligence lower than 5, but most humanoid creatures will be well above that. It's a situational spell, but it's a lot of fun to use. Once you have Eldritch Blast and Hex, which you should have already selected, your combat routine has basically been established. The other spell that you choose here in character creation is more so up to you, but I will point out once again that Armor of Agathis is a spell that's guaranteed to give you some benefits. Before we leave character creation, let's quickly go over the Warlock's features. You will start off with 8 hit points, plus your constitution modifier. In each level, 5 more hit points will be added, and of course your constitution modifier as well. You will have proficiency in wisdom and charisma saving throws, and have proficiency in light and simple weapons. We will be wearing light armor, but as far as weapons go, it doesn't matter much for you will rarely use your weapon. From levels 1 to 2, get yourself acquainted with Hex and Eldritch Blast, and work on battlefield positioning. You want to keep your Warlock back and away from the frontline action, and try to get high ground as much as possible, for it will give you advantage with Eldritch Blast. A Warlock spell slots come back after a short rest or a long rest, so after a combat encounter all you have to do is hit the short rest button and you've got them back. When you reach level 2 we get into the amazing Eldritch invocations and get to choose two. The two that I highly recommend are Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast. Both of these evocations enhance your Eldritch Blast cantrip, and they do stack. Agonizing Blast lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blast. This is a significant damage boost and you should have a plus 3 in Charisma right now and a plus 4 when we get to level 4. Repelling Blast gives your Eldritch Blast the power to push creatures up to 4.5 meters back. This not only keeps enemies further away from you, but you can knock many of them right off the face of Toril. This is like a super powerful distance shove. So now your Eldritch Blast does more damage and it pushes enemies back. This combination is deadly. The only other invocation in terms of combat effectiveness that I would consider taking over Repelling Blast would be Devil's Sight, but unfortunately it's currently bugged. Devil's Sight lets you see normally in magical and non-magical darkness. This can be really good when combined with the darkness spell that you can get at level 3. Cast darkness, stay in the magical darkness, and enemies cannot see you, but you can see them. This can be a lot of fun and definitely add some variation to your warlock's combat routine, but for now, don't pick it. At level 2 you obtain your second spell slot, allowing you to effectively cast two spells in one combat encounter. You also get to choose one more spell from the list that we had before, and the ones that I talked about in character creation are probably your best choices. Don't stress out too much over your choice, as long as you already have Hex and maybe Armor of Agathis. Take whatever you want and have some fun because you'll likely replace this spell when you reach level 3 and get access to much better ones. 
At level 3, you get improved Warlock spell slots, which means that your Warlock spell slots are always of the highest level available. This is a Warlock specific benefit to help make up for their lack of spell slots compared to other spellcasters. At this level, you also get a Pact Boon, and currently in Early Access, there is only one option, and that is the Pact of the Chain. The future upcoming packs will likely be the Pact of the Blade and the Pact of the Tome, which will add some interesting variations. Pact of the Chain gives you the Find Familiar spell, but you can cast it at will. It will not use up a spell slot. You get access to all of the regular familiars in the game, but as an added warlock bonus, you can also call in an imp or a quasit, which are basically buffed up familiars. The imp can actually prove very useful in combat. It's immune to fire, it has invisibility, which is great for ambushing enemies, and it has a claw and kind of powerful sting attack. Oh yeah, and it can also fly, which means it can move pretty far in one turn. The imp should become part of your existence at this point. Call in the imp after you finish a long rest, and he will always be with you at the start of a combat encounter, ready to deal some damage, distract enemies, and maybe even more importantly, make enemies waste their precious action on the imp and not on you or your party. The Quasit has lower HP, making it more squishy than the imp, but it also has invisibility and an action called the scare that frightens creatures which can also be helpful in combat. And our last choice to make at level 3 is choosing another spell, and we're also likely going to replace the last spell that we took with one of the more powerful ones. Misty Step is a level 2 spell, and it's a great spell for all casters, and don't hesitate to pick it up. It reads as, Surrounded by black mist, you teleport to an unoccupied place that you can see. This spell will get you to most places that you want to go on a battlefield. It has a really good range of 60 feet. Although it does cost a spell slot, it uses your bonus action and not your actual action. This makes it really good because you can cast it and teleport to a safe area and then proceed to still cast Eldritch Blast on an enemy. Due to limited spell slots, you can save this spell for emergency situations when you need to get away, or say screw it and use it early on in a fight getting yourself to some really good high ground. For our replacement spell, if you want more damage options, you should consider picking up the spell called Shatter. Shatter generates a painfully intense ringing sound that deals 3d8 thunder damage to creatures and objects. This spell can be great because you now have an AoE option and can target multiple enemies with pretty good damage as well. This will be more situational obviously, but it can certainly change the tide of a battle. It's got a really good range and its area of effect is not huge, but certainly not small. We are always going to be using Eldritch Blast as our main damage, but it's nice to have a powerful AoE option when needed. The Darkness spell will now become available, but without the Eldritch Invocation Devil's Sight, it's not nearly as good as it could be. Silence is a level 2 spell that sounds good and has its uses, but for the most part if you don't combo it with something else, an enemy can just move out of your Silence Dome and cast a spell. Hold Person paralyzes a humanoid creature if they fail a wisdom saving throw. It can last up to 10 turns. If you want to have a situational control spell, it is a good spell, but as a warlock I would just stick with Tasha's hideous laughter because it's way more fun. Hold Person also requires concentration, so it will compete with your use of Hex, but sometimes it's nice to have a good control spell for backup. The last spell that I'll mention is Invisibility. It can be a great spell, and depending on your playstyle, it might be a good one to pick up. You can be really creative with it in and outside of combat. When you reach max level 4 in early access, go ahead and use your ability score improvement to increase your charisma to 18, giving you a plus 4 modifier. Your Eldritch Blast just became even more powerful. You also get to pick up another spell from the list that we had at level 3, and also another cantrip. Pick whatever you wanted that you couldn't get before. So when you're level 4, you'll have a total of 5 spells, and the 4 that I would recommend ensuring that you have are Hex, Armor of Agathus, Shatter, and Misty Step. And your 5th spell you can have some fun with, or go more utility based like with Invisibility. At this point in the game, your Warlock will look something like this. After a long rest, cast Armor of Agathus and find Familiar and call in your Imp. Then hit the short rest button, returning you back to two spell slots. During combat, you will cast Hex on an enemy, and then proceed to use Eldritch Blast, which should have the agonizing and repelling blast invocations tied to it. 
you will for the most part use this over and over and over and over again. Use Misty Step to gain great positioning or to escape enemies in closing on your position. And when enemies are grouped up, don't be afraid to drop a shatter. You can make your imp invisible and send him onto the battlefield before combat even begins. And position him where you want so he can distract a specific enemy while also dealing not too bad of damage. And of course, always remember that you don't always have to be the most powerful build that the game offers. Have some fun with these spells, the Warlock is a really cool class. And even though you should always do Hex and Eldritch Blast, you can change it up once in a while. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys ended up enjoying this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It's a huge help to my videos. I do all sorts of content on this channel, ranging from live streams to comedy videos to game reviews to game tutorials to lore videos and much more. I'd love to have some of you guys back for a future video. And like I said before, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as well as randomly on the weekends right here on this channel. I'd love to see some of you guys stop in there as well. Until next time.